Hello, Sandy Prothero from uh, PCR Global, another one of our walk and talk uh, videos. So without further ado, check you're all safe and secure, check your back blast. So what we're gonna talk about to, on this on this walk and talk is safe place uh, and safe person from a security and from a safety uh, standpoint. Why this subject this week? Well, the last couple of weeks I've been looking at um, monitoring an accident investigation that's going on start of the week i put a post uh, on linkedin about our sort of moral compass and also uh, david puntan put a very good post up on linkedin regarding the iqa's role and how the iqa's role is very important within an organization to which we had a discussion about um, that's all well and good and david's a very professional individual but his actions are also governed by the governance of the organization which leads us right back to the start on leadership, which affects the safe place versus safe person. So that's what we're going to talk about. It's, it's an interesting one, the safe place, safe person. That comes from the, the health and safety sort of talking point. If we look at the similarities with security, we can look at situational crime prevention and we can look at social crime prevention. Safe place, situational crime prevention, safe person, secure person, uh, not a criminal. Then we're looking at social crime prevention. So we'll start with situational crime prevention. If we think of situational crime prevention, there are a couple of the theories that sort of underpin that. We've got routine acti activity theory, we've got rational choice theory, and we've got offender search sort of theories. Interesting areas to go and have a look at if you're not familiar with them. Situational crime prevention. You often hear me talk about situational risk management and you hear me going on about the grab bag mentality so you own and you have access to that cognitive locker of information that you can use in that situation on the ground you haven't got time to get on google yes you can make an excuse i've got to go to the loo and you can google something but ultimately when you're in those discussions where does that where does that impact on on accident investigation that moral compass you are actually really, when an accident occurs, you're really getting into the nitty gritty of it. And ultimately, somebody somewhere is going to be looking for blame. That shouldn't be you, you're looking for facts. Facts are very hard to come by. So situational crime prevention, where that can be slit, split down if you if you read up about it, on sort of the immediate physical environment and the immediate human environment and how they impact. If we think of that as safety in the workplace, the immediate, human environment at the time we could be looking at your supervisors your your pickups person in charge of the working party your managers and how they can prevent those accidents in that time and space situational crime prevention is more when we're talking about um individuals they have that natural sort of surveillance they're controlling that environment they're able to sort of put people off in the here and now from from undertaking a criminal act due to their presence um, so that's quite interesting. The, if we think of the immediate physical environment in a security uh, context, we're thinking about target hardening. So we think about your locks, your bolts, your grills. That can lead us then into think about the 25 situational crime prevention techniques by Clark. Very, very interesting. If I can remember the five groupings, I'll do my best. So we're talking about um, we've got to increase the risk, the risk of getting caught. We've got to increase the effort it takes. We've got to remove any sort of provocations that will push somebody into doing a, a criminal act. We've got to, um, what's the other one? Think about an ant. And we've also got to uh, remove any excuses. So excuses that people are gonna, are gonna make when they, when they actually do an act. If we think about that in a safety context, it's very similar as well. We can actually do those in, the, in that, in that, in that, in a safety environment but also the target hardening in particular that's down to you thinking about your barriers you're thinking about your interlocks you're thinking about your screens so that's the safe place so you've made the safe place situational you situational crime prevention you've actually locked things down now let's have a quick look against this sort of the safe person so always um difficult in safety when people do things wrong we always I don't, but we, everybody thinks that's the person's fault. But ultimately, what do we talk when we, when we think about a safe person? What do we actually mean by a safe person? So 
they then choose not to do those actions, uh, those unsafe acts. However, there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue there because we talked not long ago about perception and knowledge and uncertainty. If the individual is new, then ultimately they, they may not know that on what they're doing. If they hazard perception, um, again, due to them being new, they may not identify that. What if we have roofers who don't understand the courses? So ultimately, even though the safe person approach is, is you know, some people relate it back to and that's why the accidents happened, because it was an unsafe act, then ultimately we can't hang or hack on that. We can't hang or hack on that, on that reasoning. So safe person for safe for security, we're talking crimin on criminology, we're then talking about sort of social crime prevention. So these are techniques that are not focused on the here and now, they're focused on the root causes, why that individual turned to crime. Why, how can we get them out of that mentality? How can we nurture them and develop them so then they don't feel the need? So when we think of a back in the work, workplace, that's all the encouragement. That's what's going on, that's the environment. We're looking at how the managers are leading by example. We're looking at how the supervisors are leading by example. And then we're actually reducing those provocations. We just drop back into the 25 situational techniques there. Reducing the provocations because the guys are looking to fit in, sort of in that, in that environment. So safe place, safe person. Um, again, social crime prevention. That's about the problem solving. It's not the problem preventing. It's problem solving. It's they certainly cross over. Again, if we think about PME, and we've talked about that before, people, equipment, materials, and the environment. The people aspect we've just talked about and the environment we've just talked about. Situational crime prevention. Again, when we talked about um, routine activity theory, we can look at the crime triangle. The crime triangle. I think it's Cohen and Felsen. And the crime triangle, the three things required uh, for a crime. You obviously need a motivated offender, you need a suitable target, and you need the absence of a capable guardian. If we look at those three in a safety uh, context, we need a motivated offender. We need somebody who's going to do that unsafe act. If they don't do it, then it's not going to happen. We need a suitable target. What could that be? If we sort of look at the environment, um, I'm going to have to turn around here. If we sort of look at the uh, environment, suitable target, that target might just be a, a scaffolding that's not corrected, um, erected correctly, or ladders that don't have the correct checks in, in place on the ladders. So we've created that. And then if we think of the absence of a capable guardian, we're back then to thinking about, about those managers within that area. So action investigation, safe place, safe system, always controlled by the leadership by the management that's in there it is a very big area so obviously much more than a, a nine minute a nine minute video but have a look at situational crime prevention think to yourself does it overlap in the safety context james reason the systems approach or the person approach that he, he talks about so that certainly marries up with some of the things uh, i'm thinking about um, crime prevention through environmental design. We again, that's about manipulation of the environment, and that's it. It's probably the longest talk I've done. We're on about nine minutes, but it is a really big area. It's the grab bag mentality, guys. It is. It really is. What have you got, and you have to deal with it on on the ground at that time. So then, your decisions. Obviously, we know about bounded rationality and perfect rationality. We're not going to have perfect rationality. But at least if you do have uh, quite a, a deep understanding of all these sort of concepts and how they overlap in security on sa or safety, then at least our, we can be sort of content that our decisions that we're passing up the chain, which are potentially going to result in, could be disciplinaries, who knows, okay? But ultimately, if we haven't got that grab mentality, if we, if we haven't got an understanding of all those areas, then our decision making is going to be more bounded than it needs to be. A long one, but uh, thanks for watching. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay productive. Don't test it. Don't 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 trust it. Always test it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.